Welcome back and hello if you're new. Returning with what is going to be their 11th album, Soulfly have very much made a niche for themselves with their iconic, if anything, somewhat simplistic sound. Returning to the studio with longtime Soulfly fan and producer Josh Wilbur could potentially be their most experimental Soulfly record to date. So this week I'm looking at Soulfly's brand new album, Ritual. <laughs> level with you guys on this one. Soulfly have never really kind of taken me that much. I feel that there was always something lacking um, and although it would be a great riff it wouldn't have me coming back to the album. Thankfully I can tell you that that has definitely changed on Ritual. From the moment that the album opens up we've got this mysterious wall of chanting on the title track Ritual and it immediately throws you into this kind of atmospheric idea that was in Sepultura and early Soulfly records. And although, you know, like most Soulfly songs, it might be anchored with a main riff, there's a section in the bridge where things completely change and the song is pretty much turned on its head. And that is what I really love about this album, is there's so many different elements of it's Soulfly, but not quite as you know it. And it's followed by an absolutely whirlwind guitar solo with some amazing melody. And the surprises don't stop there. Uh, Dead Behind the Eyes features a guest vocal spot by Lamb of God's Randy Bly, who rather than sounding like a glamorous extra, works perfectly, you know, with this kind of like call and response idea with Cavalera. Later on in the album, the introduction of Demonized features this really beautiful acoustic guitar, which for me recalled kind of like Beneath the Remains era, Sepultura, that kind of level. Before a blistering main riff comes in with that clanging bass sound. The guitar solo, I think, really does deserve a mention on this album because they're not what you think Soulfly would normally go for, and it's such a breath of fresh air, and they often come in when you're not quite expecting them. There's also very much a death metal element to this album, you know, Max Cavalera has always been a fan of hardcore death metal and kind of that sort of groove, obviously. And you know, the track Dead Behind the Eyes may seem like a simple song, but as the, as the song progresses, it gets more and more complex and there are these real small intricacies which come through that add so much to the band's sound. And then the track has a, another fantastic guitar solo with these really interesting kind of drum beats and then we move into almost like a Suicide Silence style breakdown that pretty much finishes the song off. And it was something I really wasn't expecting. And Evil Empowered starts with this like whirlwind thrash riff before it's halted by that classic Soulfly riff, in a good way I mean. And there are so many sections which will literally turn a song straight on its head. Be it the climbing riffs of Demonized, the huge breakdown of the suffering, or Blood on the Street. Blood on the Street, for example, opens with this really lovely flute section before Cavalera's signature KILLING IN THE STREET comes in and you know immediately we're back into the metallic side of it but it's so refreshing to hear this kind of atmospheric idea that the band are really trying to play with. It's then followed immediately by this really odd tapping style on Bite the Bullet which again enhances the track with melody to no end and although the track might open with everything kind of going guns blazing the band pull it back to just have drums and a bass line later on and it is you know it's those dynamics that really bring the album together and the level of experimentation on this album has to be probably more than anything they've done before and the final track 11 
has saxophone on it. And, you know, it, but it makes sense. It doesn't sound as though it's been put out of place. There's also uh, another fantastic guest appearance by Immolation's Ross Dolan. And Ross doesn't kind of dominate the track, but neither does Cavalera, and the two work really well together. And in spite of all this, what the biggest thing I think you can tell is that the band are having fun. Like, on feedback, there's a it's a track that almost sounds a bit like Guns N' Roses. I don't know how Soulfly can sound like Guns N' Roses, but when you hear it, you'll know what I mean. Josh Wilbur was no doubt quite a large influence to the band, I think, on this record, in creating that Soulfly record that Wilbur always wanted to hear. And he's kind of the perfect person, really, because if you think about that, that's exactly what a Soulfly fan will want. However, I would say they've gone further than that, and they have converted a naysayer, like me, to really enjoy the album and really push things forward. However, the only small niggle is that I think the guitar solos are a little bit low in the mix. This is Soulfly at their most sublime, their most inquisitive, and their most deadly. And for that reason, I'm going to give the record a 4 out of 5. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to drop a comment as well. I've got plenty more album reviews, interviews, all sorts of stuff. And I've also got my Apocalypse Anniversary series over on Metal Sucks, which you can check out. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next week for another album review. Alright, take care.